one of the most powerful tools inside of Photoshop and also one of the most difficult to use is the pen tool. With the pen tool, you're able to create paths that you can use for selections or to create shapes. The nice thing about them is they're vectors, meaning that they're infinitely scalable. You can make them huge or you can make them tiny and they don't lose any quality and they have crisp, clean edges all the time. Right now, I'm going to show you the basics of how to use the pen tool in Photoshop. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe and today I'm going to show you the basics of using the pen tool inside of Photoshop. Now I polled you guys on social media, on uh, Twitter, Facebook and also on our mailing list and asked what is the number one thing that you struggle with inside of Photoshop. Believe it or not, the number one thing was how to use the pen tool. Number two is how to cut out hair. So, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to give you guys the basics, the building blocks from the ground up, how to use the pen tool. I'm going to take about 10 minutes and by the end of this, you're going to have a pretty decent grasp of how the pen tool works and how you can draw nice curves going e either sharp curves or nice rounded S curves and also how to create nice straight lines using the pen tool. It's not as hard as you think. And stay tuned afterwards. I've got an important announcement for you. Let's look at the fundamentals. So we're going to go under view. And we're going to go down to show and what we want to do is turn on our grids so we're going to click here on the grid and then we're just going to zoom in don't worry about anything else right now just these grids it's going to help us to kind of understand a little bit how the pen tool works i'm zoomed in to about 242 so you know depending on your resolution just zoom in so you can see these grid lines nice and clearly uh, the other thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be focusing on the pen tool which is the p Hit the P key on the keyboard will enable the pen tool. And if we click in here, we can see we've got some different options. There's our regular pen tool, which we're going to be using. Freeform just enables you to just kind of draw and it will create a path as you draw. Then there's a curvature pen tool. The curvature pen tool does essentially the same thing as the pen tool, but it works a little bit differently. It kind of starts to create the curve. So for some people who are not used to the regular pen tool, you might find this more intuitive. Um, try it out and see how you feel about it, but we're going to focus on the regular pen tool. And also we have the ability to add or delete anchor points in here. So this, you'll, you'll see what those are in a minute. And then we can convert the point. And we'll also come to that. So we'll cover all of these. These are the tools we're going to use. Now we're not necessarily going to have to select them individually. We're going to use them together. So let's start with the basic pen tool. And let's look at the anatomy of a path. So that's what you create for the pen tool as a path. So we're going to start on this grid line. And I'm just going to click. And I've added a point. Right now, there's no path. It's just a single point. In order to create a path, you have to have more than one point. So why don't we click up in the next corner. And now you'll see we've got a line there. That's known as our path. And these two are our points. So we can select these points, we can move them around, we can do different things. So why don't we just go down to this corner here, we're going to click again. And notice what we're doing is we're creating these straight lines. Let's finish our triangle. If we go to the start point, you'll see a little circle will appear, click. And now we've closed the path. So this is known as a closed path. And by the way, under here, there's three options, shape or path. We're going to be working with the path option right now. The shape option will do the same thing, but it enables you to fill it, um, which is a different kind of skill than we're working on right now because we are thinking about using it for selections. All right, so if you just click, you're going to create straight lines. Now, if you want to create curves, what you do is you click and drag up. So let's click and drag up to that first point there. Then we're going to go parallel to there, click and drag down. And let's go to exactly the same length. That's why we're using these grids. And what we've done is we've just created an end curve. So if we want to close that out, why don't we just go over to there and we click and we've just created an oval. So let's look at the different parts of this oval. But first of all, why don't we go up here and we're going to choose work shape. We're going to choose to save path and we'll just call them shapes. So what we've done now is we've saved these paths. You're not going to see anything in the layers panel because these paths are a vector. So if I click away in a panel, they disappear and then just choose on there and you'll see them again. So these are the 
pen or the path creation tools. If we go down to, here's our path modification tools. So the first one is the path selection tool. That means if I click on a path, it selects all the points. And you can drag select to select it as well. But if you want to choose the individual points, what you want to do is change to the direct selection tool. Now just marquee select around one of those points. Notice that we can select one point. Notice it's selected because it's filled in. The hollow one is unselected. So that means if I move right now, just the selected one is going to move. All right, let's look at some other things. These are known as adjustment handles. So these handles, I can click on a point. Notice when I select that point, it's now filled in and I can modify that by dragging this around. See that? And if I pull it closer to the point, it's going to flatten it out. The further I take it away, the more it rounds it. So that's how you change the shape. Now, as I move it, notice that both sides move together. See how these handles move like that? If you hold down the Alt key or the Option key, you can separate them. And now I'm only moving one side. I just released the uh, key and you saw they both started moving. So holding down that key, notice just one point at a time is moving. All right, let's look a little bit more in depth. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab the pen tool again. If we want to get rid of these, um, actually what we'll do is we'll go back to our selection. And here's a keyboard shortcut. P will go to the pen. The A key will go to these. Now, as you can see there, it picks the individual one because it's the filled in one. If you hit Shift A, it's going to toggle to the black one and the black one will select the entire path. To delete the path, hit the delete key. Same thing here, delete, and it's gone. You could just go here and you could also trash the shapes there if you wanted. All right, let's go back to our pen tool, the P key, and let's create some curves here. So I'm going to click and drag up. Now, as I'm dragging up, what I'm doing is I'm determining the direction of the curve. That means this curve now is going to start by going this way. Now, if I click and drag down, Notice what it does is it creates a end curve. But because I clicked and dragged down, I'm also setting the direction of the next curve to go this way. So if I click and drag again, I'm creating a curve. So try this on a few and you can see here, as long as you're dragging in that direction, it's setting those handles there and it's setting that direction for the curve. So we can just continue like this all day long. But here's the thing, if I just click here and I don't drag down, see what it does there? It just ends the point right there. And then of course my next one is gonna start like this. So we created a hard edge there because I didn't drag. And if we select our path, let me go down here and choose our direct selection tool. If we look here, Notice we've got the handles on both sides. On here we don't, we have a handle. We don't have a handle there because we didn't click and drag. So this is actually a hard edge. It's not a curve. So we created an edge, just like, you know, when we did before, when we did the straight lines, when we just clicked. So when you click, it's gonna create that straight line versus the curve. Now, if you wanted to convert this into a curve, you could do that by using the convert point tool. So what this does is enables you to select it and it gives you the option now to drag and add that curve. So it converted it now from that straight line to a curve and you were able to click and drag to add that. And you know, you can see here, we can do the same thing with that one. Now, if you want to move that while you're drawing it, hit the space bar. And with the space bar, I can move that point and now I can continue. Let's just pop it right on there. And now we were able to continue drawing just like before by converting that shape. Now you can take any curve at any time, click on that curve and remove the handles and then it makes that a straight line with that same convert tool. See that? So now you get those sharp edges. Once again, if you want to convert it into a curve, click and drag. And then by clicking and dragging, you can change that once again. So that's the convert tool. That's what you use that for.
to go from a sharp edge to a curved edge. All right, so we've got the basics here of this particular curve. Uh, this is what's known as an open path because it's not closed. So you can't fill it with anything. Uh, so why don't we just delete that? I'm just going to hit the delete key a couple of times. And let's hit the P again for the pen tool. And now I'm going to show you something different. So we're clicking and we're dragging up just like we did before. And now we're going to click and drag down, but don't release yet. This time, hold down the Alt or the Option key, and now we're going to change the direction of that curve. So that means instead of this curve moving down, it's now moving up. And then if I click and drag down, notice what happens. Now I create an M curve. If I go over here and click, it'll just be like normal. But if I want to reverse that direction again, hold down the Alt or the Option and drag this down. And now we're setting the direction of the new curve that way. And you can see that's how we can create those sharp edges there by reversing direction. So whichever direction that handle is pointing is the direction that you're going to go with your curve. Excellent. So that's your basics there of working with curves. So this video you just watched is a little snippet from a brand new course that I just released. It's called Selection Secrets in Photoshop. I've been asking you guys on social media and also through our newsletter, what are the areas you've been struggling with the most inside of Photoshop? And a lot of the answers I'm getting are very consistent and most of them have to do with selections and cutting out images. The top two, believe it or not, are how to use the pen tool and how to cut out hair and get good selections. So what I've done is I've created this course uh, selection secrets inside of Photoshop and I've taken everything that I've learned over the last 20 years to do with selections, how to select and cut out images. Now this is not just for compositing, this could be for people working with photographs where you're wanting to select parts of photos to you know apply dodging and burning or do localized adjustments, brightening and darkening different parts. But a lot of it of course does deal with cutting out different objects, complex selections, things like trees and um, complex edges. Cutting out people, cutting out hair, using the pen tool to get very precise selections. All of these are the kind of things you guys have been struggling with. And another one that I saw is edges. Okay, once you've cut it out, what do you do to clean up those edges? So what I've done with this course is I'm showing you everything from the pen tool to the marquee tools. I'm showing you how you use a select tool. We go in depth into all the adjustments under a select and mask and how to do soft selections, hard edge selections. We look at our channels. We look at masks. I show you the basics of layer masks, the basics of the pen tool. If you've never used them before, don't worry. And then we jump under the hood and we look at all the different things we can do with channels, how we can save and load selections, pretty much anything you can imagine with selection. I've taken my 20 years of experience working with Photoshop and I've piled all of this into the training that I would have liked when I first started in Photoshop. I've also included all the lesson files under the folder there, you'll see it on your digital download, where you can grab all the same images as I've been working with, and you can follow along at your own pace. I've also included a PDF there where I've got detailed written instructions for the pen tool. Even though I have a couple of tutorials where I'm demonstrating the pen tool and even giving you some exercises where you can build your pen tool muscles, I've also got those written steps. So you at the end of this video, you're not going to be wondering how does the pen tool work anymore. You're finally going to get it and do these exercises, practice, and you're going to become a master of the pen tool as well as all the other tools. So happy selections, guys. And anyway, guys, check it out in the link underneath. And uh, for the launch special, I'm going to give you guys a 20% discount off. I'll put the code in the comments underneath. So anyway, guys, I hope you like this video. Um, drop a comment and let me know what is your biggest selection challenge that you have inside of Photoshop. I would love to know. Just let us all know underneath. If you like this video, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.